Welcome back to the channel. Not building anything today. This is all about tree identification in this video. Uh, I've always loved identifying trees forever, my whole life. Uh, Dendrology and Silvics of North American Trees was my favorite class out of all the classes I took for both my undergrad degrees, uh, forestry and wildlife and fishery science. Dendro topped everything for me. I uh, got to be the teaching assistant when I was working on my master's in forestry. Did that all the way up till I graduated. Um, got to help a lot of students identify trees. Super fun time. Really enjoyed that. So that's what we're doing in this video today is talking about trees. I'm going to drive this road that goes through the property here and when I see a cool tree I'm going to stop and talk about it. I'm going to keep it as brief as I can but I do tend to ramble. Fair warning but I will do my absolute best to keep it uh, kind of on track. Uh, I will be mentioning scientific names, uh, some terminology here and there. Uh, when that comes up, that will pop up on one side or the other, like so. Don't you love YouTube magic? Super cool. So yeah, uh, if you want to take notes or anything, uh, hopefully that would be helpful to have the actual word written out. Um, let's see here. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, hopefully this will be a fun time for you. It'll be a fun time for me because I like to talk about trees. So let's get to it. First species for today. And what better place to start than with the state tree of Tennessee? And that would be yellow poplar. Uh, common name is written out, as you can see, yellow dash poplar. The hyphen in the name, in the common name, indicates that this is not a true poplar. Uh, a true poplar would be something like a cottonwood or an aspen. Uh, there are things about this species that make it appear like a true poplar, um, such as the petiole on the leaf. Right, I don't have a leaf here. It's wintertime. They're all kind of looking a little rough on the ground. But uh, on the petiole, the part that attaches the leaf to a twig, it is flat, so the leaf can flutter and wave in the wind. Uh, so that is a poplar characteristic, which is, I think, part of the reason why this is termed a yellow poplar. Other common names include tulip poplar, uh, tulip tree, uh, tulip wood, just simply poplar sometimes. I even heard somebody call it one time a uh, tulip magnolia. So lots of different common names. Uh, scientific name for this guy is going to be Liriodendron tulipifera or tulipifera. It's in the Magnoliaceae family. And it's in the magnolia family. Uh, one way that you can tell that it is in the magnolia family has to do with the twig, and we'll look at that in just a minute. First off, though, we'll talk about the bark just to, for a minute. Um, really nice gray bark, right? That sounds kind of vague, but honestly, the color of gray with yellow poplar bark is really easy to pick up in the woods, and right? it kind of stands out just because it's such a, an ashy, stark gray. If you look at it a little bit closer, you'll see these interlocking or interlacing ridges, right? So you've got this ridge and furrow formation. Uh, think of it as like a peak in a valley or a, a mountain in a valley, like you would have in topography. That's right, so the ridges and furrows. And these ridges then, they interlace. So you've got two here. They come together into a single ridge and then split off again up here. All right, so you've got this kind of diamond formation. It sort of looks like... Uh, if you imagine expanded metal, like you might see in the floor of a trailer or something like that. So, that's the bark then, uh, pretty quick. Now, we'll move on to the twig and the bud. There's one over here. Okay, so here we have the twig and the bud for yellow poplar. Uh, we'll start up here with the terminal bud on the very end. Uh, if you turn it to one side or the other, you can see there are two scales there. and there is a seam that runs right down the middle between those two scales. And hopefully you can see that in the video there. If you look at it from side view like so, a lot of people will describe that as a duck bill. Uh, I've heard that used a whole lot, the duck bill bud on the yellow poplar. Uh, the technical term for this type of bud would be valvate. Right? There is a scale on either side with a seam in the middle. Gives it a bivalve appearance, like you might see with a mussel or a clam, something like that. Uh, the coloration on these buds can vary a lot. Uh, I've seen these green, yellow, red, blue, purple, almost black sometimes. Uh, huge variation in color there. So, uh, 
would not necessarily, oh, you can see it really good there, somewhere behind a cloud. Uh, so I would not use color necessarily as an identifying characteristic for this species. Moving down a little bit then, we'll look at the lateral bud here, the leaf scar, and this ring that runs around the twig. Um, the leaf scar, we'll start with that, if I can get it to twist a little bit there. Uh, very pale in color compared to the twig itself. Uh, it usually stands out pretty well. Um, somewhat oblong or oval shaped with a little bit flat on the top there where the bud sits above the scar. Um, if I turn it to the side here, hopefully you'll be able to see. There we go. It's a little bit dished out. Um, that is a, a good thing to look for. Uh, different leaf, different species will have different shapes of leaf scar, so uh, looking at all different orientations of the, sca of the scar is a good idea. Moving on to this line then, uh, this is a stipular scar, and this is what I was referring to uh, when I mentioned that this is a magnolia, and there's a way that you can tell. That is this scar right here. So a stipular scar is what's left after last year's stipules have dropped away. Go figure, right? Just like a leaf scar. So a stipule then is uh, essentially a leafy appendage that wraps pretty much around the twig, so there will be a leaf that... Ooh, if I could see here, here we go. There'll be a leaf that comes off here, and there'll be smaller leafy bits that go all the way around the twig, and that's what leaves that scar right there. If you see that, uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're probably looking at something in the magnolia family, at least in this region of North America. So here we have an eastern white pine, uh, Pinus strobus in Pinaceae. That's the pine family. Um, I want to look at the bark here for just a minute. Uh, this is uh, obviously a very small individual. It's not very big around, but this bark right here is what I look for when I am searching out um, a good specimen to harvest a bit of cordage from, right? Um, this really smooth bark here on the eastern white pine makes really good, really strong cord. Doesn't take knots all that well, but it's very strong. Uh, and also when you get it from a green living individual, uh, there's sap in there, right? And the sap allows that cord to essentially glue itself together if you were to use it as a binding or something like that, making a tripod maybe. Um, now I wouldn't necessarily suggest taking it from the trunk. Uh, this is just a really good example of what the bark looks like. I would take it from a branch. That way you don't uh, do any unnecessary damage to the, the trunk or the tree. Uh, looking up here then, you can see these branches all come out at a single point, a single node. Uh, that is a really good ID characteristic for eastern white pine, regardless of its size. It will always have that characteristic. Uh, we'll have a section of clean trunk or clean bowl and uh, a point with a bunch of branches, a bunch of knots. Again, another clear section, right? Each of these clear sections indicates a year's growth. So this is also... Uh, an easy tree to get a fairly accurate age. Um, you can count the number of whorls, which is what this point is called as a whorl of branches. You can count the number of whorls. Uh, usually, I think I've heard most often uh, add five, and that's how many years that tree has been alive. Uh, so let's say that you count 15, add five, the tree is about 20 years old. So that's pretty cool. Um, really, really useful tree. You'll hear a lot more about this tree probably on this channel as time moves along. Uh, same with yellow poplar we talked about just a minute ago. But uh, I'm gonna move on to the needles then and we'll look at that for just a second. So here we have a fascicle of needles or a bundle of needles for Eastern White Pine. Biggest thing to look for here is the number of needles in a single bundle. All right, so eastern white pine is going to have, if I can get those spread out, five needles per fascicle or per, per bundle. All right, this is the only pine in the eastern U.S. that's going to have five needles per bundle. So if you find a tree with five needles, it's automatically going to be eastern white pine. Uh, there are some times where you might pick a fascicle that has three or four um, but most often it's going to be five. If you, for some odd reason, find a tree 
that mostly has fascicles of three or four for some strange reason. An additional characteristic you can look for, let's see if I can get the everything to lay nicely here and focus in. There we go. White lines on the back of the needle. All right, those white lines um, in conjunction with the green of the rest of the needle actually gives this species somewhat of a bluish appearance from a distance, which is kind of cool. Get, there we go. Yeah, so five needles per fascicle and those white lines on the back gives you an eastern white pine. For a bit of an example here, there is a tree that was right next to the eastern white pine. This one has two needles per fascicle and they also are twisted. I can get it over on its own. There we go. So five needles, two needles. This one is from a Virginia pine. Uh, two needles and twisted is a characteristic for that species. So numbers of needles per fascicle is a huge help in identifying different species of pine. Here we have black birch, Betula lenta in Betulaceae. Uh, other common names for this include sweet birch and cherry bark birch. Uh, cherry bark birch is actually a pretty good common name for this, I think, because uh, there are a few characteristics that are extremely similar to cherry bark. Um, namely, these horizontal lines that are present all up and down the bark here. Uh, some of them are kind of difficult to see because they're covered up with this lichen stuff here that's growing on them. It's a really common thing, uh, but kind of covered up a little bit. But there are a lot of horizontal lines. Those horizontal lines are lenticels. Uh, lenticels then are uh, for gas exchange through the bark. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with stomates, stomata in the leaves that are used to exchange uh, gases from within the plant to the outside atmosphere, right? Same function goes on pretty much with these lenticels uh, to a lesser degree, but it's, it's a similar function. But it's a really good identifying characteristic for this. Uh, also, as this species tends to get a little bit larger, there will be little bits of bark that curl off ever so slightly, right? Little bitty curled pieces of bark. Um, most species of birch will have bark that peels off to some degree. All right, so that's a good thing to look for. Uh, and now I will find a smaller one to look at some buds and twigs. There's not one right here, but I know where there is one. So here we go. There we go. So there is a nice twig and some buds for black birch. And to start off with, I was talking about the horizontal lenticels on the mature bark. If you look between this bud and my thumb, there are a bunch of little white dots. Oh, there we go. Now we can see them some behind a cloud. There we go. Little white dots. Those are also lenticels. And on the twig, instead of horizontal lines, there are little dots. Uh, looking at the... First off, the, the presence, or lack thereof, of lenticels. The number, or the abundance, the shape, the size, and the color are all really good characteristics to look for uh, that can help you identify a specific species of tree. All right, so lenticels are a good thing. Those are your friends. Moving down here to the bud then. There we go. Let's see, it's kind of uh, like a maybe a chestnut or a rusty brown color on the bud scales themselves. And on the margins of the scales, the very edge of the bud scales, um, they are slightly frosted looking. It's a little bit lighter in color at the edge there. Um, so I mentioned the valvate buds on yellow poplar. These are known as imbricate, all right, imbricate scales, as there are many scales on here. So that's the technical term for that kind of bud. And if you look, you might be able to see it a little bit on this bud, but I'm gonna pull up here and we'll look at this one, if I can get it up here, there we go. At the base of that bud, there is a small stalk that attaches it to the twig. 
looks kind of like a turtleneck sweater. That is a really good characteristic for this species. Um, and when I mention really good characteristics, um, some are good on their own, but more often than not, you want to combine as many characteristics as possible, uh, ideally to be as accurate as you can in identifying uh, what you're looking at. Um, so some characteristics really good on their own, but put together, uh, most trees will have a defining set of characteristics, if that makes sense. Here's another characteristic for black birch. These are catkins. Right, everything in the Betulaceae family will have catkins of some sort, everything in the birch family. And these specifically are on black birch. Just something else to show there. An additional characteristic that I forgot to mention previously is if you scrape the bark with your thumbnail, scrape it away so you get to the, the green part that's underneath that inner bark, you will smell winter green. Uh, winter green oil is very prominent in the species. Uh, once upon a time, this actually was used to commercially produce wintergreen oil. It's exactly the same as what comes from the wintergreen plant. So, pretty cool stuff there. So here we have black cherry, a relatively young individual. Uh, but this is Prunus serotina or serotina in rosaceae, is in the rose family. And here on this bark you can see all of these lines here. Those are horizontal lenticels like I was talking about on the black birch. And maybe there you can see why another common name for black birch would be cherry bark birch. Uh, this species has really, really smooth bark at this age. As it gets more mature, uh, it will produce what is often described as cornflake bark. Uh, just shows up as small scales that are actually about the size of cornflakes. Uh, but they will retain this sort of shiny almost polished nature on top of each of those scales. Uh, I don't know the location of any mature black cherries uh, here on this property, so I can't show that unfortunately, but it will retain that kind of shiny appearance as it matures. So here we have the twig and the buds for black cherry. Uh, you can see the color is very similar to uh, the trunk showed just a minute ago. Lenticels, however, have changed shape. These are no longer horizontal. These are little dots now. Similar to black birch, looked at just a minute ago. A little bit different color, though. Slightly different size. Uh, it might be difficult to pick that up on camera, but if you were to compare these side by side in person, uh, you would probably see there's a slight difference there. So, as I mentioned, color, shape, size, all that kind of stuff definitely comes into play when you're looking at those lenticels. Uh, moving on to the bud, then. We'll focus on this terminal bud here and we're moving into flushing season here so the leaves will be popping out pretty soon so that green that you're seeing is a little bit more apparent than it would be throughout most of the winter uh, most of the time it's going to be primarily that reddish brown color that you see uh, there'll be a little bit of green but not a whole lot throughout the winter uh, if you were to scrape this with your thumbnail or your fingernail you would get uh, somewhat of an almond odor, uh, and that is uh, essentially the presence of cyanide. Uh, it's not truly cyanide. I cannot remember the name off the top of my head at the moment. I will pop that up on screen, uh, the actual name of the, the chemical that's in here. Uh, but it is really similar to cyanide. I would not suggest chewing on this. Uh, probably wouldn't be lethal, but it might make you feel a little bit uh, less good than you would like. Uh, this is, uh, especially the foliage, it is fatal to livestock, especially cows, um, primarily because they essentially over-digest all of their food. Uh, but it is fatal to cows, so if you have livestock, I would suggest cutting down any black cherry that you have, just so they don't eat it. Because they like it, this is not good for them. But... This is a soft mast producing species though. This does produce fruit, uh, it does produce cherries. Really, really favorable by any species of wildlife that you could think of, bears, turkeys, um, songbirds, anything will eat these and they absolutely will be loving life 
when they're eating these cherries. Thanks for joining along with my tree walk and drive today. Hope it was enjoyable for y'all. I had a good time talking about trees. Um, if you enjoyed this video, there are a few things that I would ask of you. One is to like the video. The other is to subscribe if you've not done so already. Both of those things would be a huge help to the channel. And also, uh, if this is the kind of video that you enjoy, throw a comment down below. I'll definitely read that. If you have suggestions on more videos like this, such as species to look at, uh, differentiating between similar species like oaks, pines, hickories, things like that, more than happy to do that. Would absolutely love it. So if you have anything like that to say, throw that down in the comments. I will read that. I will reply to it. I'll do all the stuff you're supposed to do in the comment section, and we'll have fun with that. And until next time, have a good one. And go look at some trees. It's good for you.